Hi TTCers. So I wanted to do an update of just how my month's going, what I've been up to, what days I'm on, TTC stuff, non-TTC stuff, stuff like that. So this is today's 5 DPO. I had a positive OPK last Tuesday the 19th. And so I'm I'm guessing I ovulated the Wednesday, the day after. It could have been Thursday, and maybe this is for DPO. But the way it worked out last month, it seemed like it was it was the day after I had a positive OPK was actual ovulation day. So um, we B deed the day before the positive OPK. And the day of the positive OPK. The day before, it was just a coincidence. And then we did the day of the positive OPK. And that was a positive on both my Clear Blue and my Answer Brand. So even though, like I said before, like the Answer Brand is technically expired, I guess you would say. Um, you're not supposed to use it after 30 days of opening that tube. I, I've still been using it just out of curiosity I guess and just as an extra OPK I don't know I don't I guess I don't really know why <laughs> I am weird I guess um, so we didn't BD the following the day after the positive OPK which normally we would try to since this has been a you know we're kind of having a laid-back month and not trying to stress about things and my husband was like sick and I don't know what it is but if you're trying to conceive you know what I'm talking about it, it never fails no matter what week your ovulation falls on some always happens um, either I'll be sick or I'll have some you know infection or sinus infection or something I have to get antibiotics for or my husband's sick and never he could be we could be fine and then it's like oh positive OPK and it's like oh all of a sudden we're sick so maybe I'm just over analyzing that but that's just how it seems like it happens so but I didn't want to I it wasn't mad or nothing you know we were trying to have a laid-back month so I wasn't gonna be mad at him that we didn't BD that night um one thing about that is uh, we I haven't used anything either like my trying to conceive stuff like pre-seed or soft cups or mucinex or things I've been doing the other months I didn't use any of that um, I think it's just because we're j I've just been trying to have a more relaxed month and not trying to overdo stuff I guess I haven't really been doing last month I did fertility yoga and fertility massage which I'll try to find the link so I can put down in the comment section because I really I really liked them. I made, I think it really made me ovulate earlier last month because I ovulated on calendar day 12, which is early for me. Um but I didn't really do much of that this month cuz I, I like I said it's just been a laid back month, guys. Um so, anyways, one thing I've been using that I was going to suggest, if you do apps on your phone, I've been using the iPeriod app, and I really liked that one. It tracks your days, you put in, you know, the day you start your period, and like the average of how many days it lasts, and you can change your um, luteal phase. It automatically puts 14 days, as in, that's just an average, but you can change it to, if you know how many days yours is, like mine's 12. So it'll show you your fertile week, and it's really been pretty accurate as to my OPKs, because I'm still doing my OPKs. And it it's nice, too, because right when you click on the app, there's like this little home screen, and it has it sh automatically shows you what day you're on in this cycle, how many days left you have to your period, what date your next period is estimated on. So I really like that one. And you could, just like the other ones, too, you could put notes... And you could put, you can mark down if you BD that night. There's like, it gives you a little heart to put on that day. Um, 
or like I'll put notes like oh this was my positive OPK day or you could even put your temperatures if you temp and you can um, put down your what kind of cervical mucus you're having that day too if you check your cervical mucus so I really recommend that one it's it's a nice one and anyway so one other thing I've been doing this month is reading this book it's the Conception Chronicles and it's I'm, I'm halfway through it and it's really good it's really like spot on um, it's basically about these three friends I think this was written in 2005 it's a bit older and what they would do is it's these emails from these three friends who were you know trying to conceive and they were like best friends but they didn't they didn't know as much as they thought they did about one another um, as far as trying to conceive goes like one of the friends it took a lot you know over a year to get pregnant and this new friend who's basically the main person you know she's just going through finding out, out about all this stuff on her own with a little bit of her friends help so it's a pretty good book I think it's spot on you know it's it's taking her through the you know when you're trying to conceive and uh, how it affects your relationship and your, or your marriage and now I'm to the part where she's like just starting the like fertility process of as far as going to the clinic and getting your blood work up and like really just seeing if there's anything wrong because you've been trying for so long. So I recommend that. It was only maybe like seven bucks, eight bucks on eBay. So there's there was a lot of books and last month after I got my period and I was just, I was feeling really down. Um, I, I, I felt like I needed a book to read something. You know, that might sound weird, but I, I just, I needed something. So I, I picked out a book and it was random. I'd never heard of that book before or nothing. And it turns out it's a, it's a pretty good book so far. So. Um, another thing I said I was going to do an update on was the bromelain tablets. If you don't know or if you didn't see my other video, basically there's this debate about whether the, uh, pineapple core helps you get pregnant or not. There's like tribes or stuff like that who consider pineapple to be a fertility fruit. And bromelain is found in the core itself not on the rest of the pineapple just the core and that's a, it acts as a blood thinner and thickens the uterine lining and something about it it's supposed to attract the egg to the uterus there's not a whole lot of studies on it there's some people you know maybe don't believe in that sort of stuff and it's like okay there's not a lot of studies on it I'm not gonna believe it and that's fine just for me, it's been, we've been trying for so long, almost a year, so I, I thought it was worth a try. And last month, I I ordered the tablets, the chewable tablets that I had read some other lady took, but they didn't get here in time. They, something got messed up with my order, so I had to do the actual just pineapple core, and you're supposed to take it 1 DPO to 5 DPO. So this month, I got to do the tablets. I'll show you what they look like. They're pretty small. Let me get that out of there. Pretty tiny. See that? Um, and they're not bad. They they taste like a hint of pineapple, like you would expect. To me, it kind of tastes like um, runts, the candy, like the the banana one, which I'm not a fan of the banana runt. <laughs> but it doesn't taste bad. I I chew one in the morning and one it in the evening. I put it right on my um, bathroom counter, so then. I see it every day and I, I, I just chew in real quick, takes two seconds. It's easier than the pineapple core because pineapple core is a little bit rough to chew, but not possible. And anyways, I'll wrap this up with just a couple of my thoughts. I've got this new workout DVD and it's Jillian Michaels. I've done this before. Um, on demand, there's some fitness workouts if you have Comcast. And I found the DVD of it, and I, it's kind of my mind's kind of all over the place 
because you're probably like, oh, why is she buying these workout DVDs when she's trying to get pregnant, right? Well, I used to work out quite a bit. And, you know, the last few months I haven't because it's like, you know, I'm trying to get pregnant and I, I don't want it to mess things up, if that makes sense to you. Um, and then this last month when we really just put everything we had into that month and it didn't happen and I was just like, screw it, you know. I had an attitude and I think we all get this way. It was just screw it. I'm not getting pregnant. I might as well do the stuff I love to do and I want to do. And, you know, that includes working out. Um, and I know there's some workouts for pregnant women. And I know, you know, athletes and stuff, they still get pregnant. And maybe they don't know they're pregnant right off the bat. And they're still doing their workouts. So I don't know why I'm overthinking it. But for some reason, I just can't get up the motivation to, to start it. And... I'm 5 GPO today, right? Possibly 4, probably 5. And so it's like, I, I think about all the things that go along with that. Like, oh, this week, if I'm, if the egg got fertilized, then that, that egg's going to be implanting. And, you know, what if I do these workouts? And Jillian Michaels, she's, they're not easy workouts. I mean, she's pretty intense. And maybe, you know, I can turn it down a notch and not do it quite like she's doing it just to do a modified version but what if I mess up the the egg getting implanted or something and I'm, I'm just venting but it's just it seems it seems so silly to think like that but I do and then at the same time it's like okay well this was supposed to be a laid-back month and not stressing about stuff so why are you overthinking it and stressing about it I don't know We'll see how that goes, but if you guys want to give me your thoughts about that, that would be great. And maybe you know exactly what I'm talking about. You start thinking about all the littlest things of maybe what went wrong last month. And maybe if you don't do, or if you do do, is it going to mess it up this month? I don't know. And and that, that could be because it's it's we've been trying for a long time. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But... That's basically where I'm at. I will be doing another video because I have a lot to talk about of people being pregnant around you when you're trying to conceive. And also um, a little bit about, you know, secondary infertility a little bit. I'm not saying I know a whole lot about that, but it seems like everyone who's having long-term trying to conceive or having a lot of problems, I don't see a lot of videos of people who had a kid, who have had a child, have a child, and then they're having a struggle getting pregnant again. I don't see that a lot on YouTube, so I'm going to be talking about more about that too, because that's right where I'm at. But thank you guys for watching my video, and I will get back to you later.